welcome to another episode of Plonk at Home, the show that teaches you how to create crazy gold creations in your home. In this episode, how to make a club and ball. To help you along with this episode, download our design pack from our website. For this episode, you will need a cereal box, tin foil, marble or plasticine, packaging cardboard, newspaper, glue, sticky tape, paint, scissors, a pencil, and a ruler. So, if you've got everything ready, let's begin. It's over to Mad Mike, our chief mini golf maker. Go, plug, go off. Yeah, we're here, and we're going to make uh, we're going to make more golf courses in um, this episode. We're going to show you how to make a ball and a club. You can just get more balls and golf clubs, but we can make it a bit more fun by making our own ones. Okay, so the great thing about this lesson today is we actually have a support pack that you can download online from the website, which shows you exactly how to make it, has everything that you need for it, and it gives you step-by-step -step instructions. We have everything we need, though. We do, we do have everything we need, but it always helps anything, having That's it written down. Like sellotape. <laughs> sellotape, yeah. You need loads of sellotape. In fact, tape generally. I mean, any you could have a look around your house and try and dig out any tape you find. It's always good to have different sorts of tape. Do you remember what that was called? What? It was gaffer tape, do you remember? And we also, um, you can also use fragile tape. Yeah, fragile tape, yeah. Step one, measure how long your club needs to be by measuring your player's waist to the floor. Oh. Tape measures often look like this. And what? on the end, you can pull the end out and there's a little metal bit on the end. With this little metal bit, you can hook over the end of something. So it's like a grapple hook. Yeah, it's like a, like a grapple hook. A grapple hook? So on a tape measure, the bottom numbers are centimetres and the top numbers there are inches. In between the centimetres, you'll see lots of little lines. These are millimetres and there are 10 millimetres in every centimetre. When we're building golf courses, we often use millimetres to be more precise. So if we wanted 20 centimetres, we would describe the measurement as 200 mil. But for the purposes of our building crazy golf courses at home, we're gonna work in centimetres. We're gonna make your club 70 centimetres. So in this instance, we need 70 centimetres. So we're gonna use a tape measure to count all the way up to 70. There we go, 70 centimetres. You might find that a lot of deliveries have been made to the house recently. Everybody seems to be making a lot of deliveries. The best thing- Especially that... you. <laughs> okay. There were deliveries I made were for the benefit of the whole household. But you might find that there is a big cardboard box knocking around maybe um, in the recycling that would do this. Ideally... Or you could stick cardboard together. Exactly, sir, and that's what we're going to do. But you do need to try to find quite thick cardboard to do this. Yay! I love making balls. Now, should we start making a, a ball and club? Yes. But we need funky fingers first. The first thing to do is to take your ruler and draw onto the cardboard the shaft of your club. We took the measurement from our uh, measuring tape and we cut this piece of card exactly to 70 centimetres. Now we're using the thickness of the ruler to mark out the thickness of the shaft of our club. Now rulers are really great tools because you can use rulers not only to measure things, you can also use the edge of them to draw really straight lines. Use all the space available on your card to draw three identical outlines for your club shaft. It's ruler man! This card is for a joke. What do you call a king that's 30 centimetres long? I don't know. What do you call a king that is 30 centimetres long? A ruler! 70 centimetres. There we go. 70 centimetres. Mm. We 
finished cutting out your club, you next we need to line up all our pieces of golf club and wrap up a single piece of cellar tape around them just to hold them together before we wrap. Okay, so the next step, once your golf clubs are stuck together, is to wrap newspaper around it. A little top tip when you're using sellotape or when you're gonna stick something that you're trying to prepare, a top tip is to cut a few pieces of tape off first and just put them to one side so they're there when you need them because if you find yourself holding things down, holding things together, then you just Doing get... what I'm trying to do now is really, really frustrating. Finally! Finally! So they're not going to do anything. This table's fine. It's not going to peel anything off. Make sure that you don't stick them onto stuff that is going to peel. Like right. something that's painful. Right. Yeah, off we go. <laughs> Now. And now you need to wrap a piece of newspaper around the club head of your club. Like we've done here. Like this. Squash this. When we're out making golf courses around London and even Europe with the Honk team, we're always trying to think of new ways and new designs to make a crazy golf hole and to make it really fun and challenging to play. It's also really important to make it look nice and to do this we use loads of different skills and lots of different tools, many of which that we are going to cover and show you over the course of this series. Today, making a golf course at home, we're going to make a really simple game piece that works as a standalone game. We're going to make a ramp out of a cereal box and we're going to use all our old drinks cans to make a game of can knockdown. What we're going to need to do is cut along this line. What, do you remember how we cut properly? What do we do? Oh, uh, we you take our fingers and wipe them up. And you line the scissors are going. Bing! Yes, real one with scissors. Second thing, what did you do with one hand? You use the scissors, right? Yeah, and the other hand we hold it. Perfect. When you're cutting, it's a good idea to use one hand to hold in place what you're cutting and use the other hand to do the cutting. Now, Ted is left-handed, but if you use your right hand here to hold it, Ted, so that when you're cutting, you use that hand. That's very good. Now, try and keep as best you can along that line. Now, now we, are we going to read about rail? <laughs> we read that, we did all this, and we, had, well, we ate our golden chicken. Need to read again. In fact, what we're going to do is I'm going to turn the box inside out. Yeah, but what we can do is we can decorate it and make a really cool ramp of our own. Let's actually make a dance one. Okay, that's a good idea. The great thing about all this is you can work together. Whenever we're building the golf courses at Plonk, we always, always, always work in twos. It often requires somebody to hold something in place while the other person can stick things in. Very good. If they get the splat, it's 9,000. If they explode with the splat, and the splat gives them extra power! Hey, so Ted, what do you think of this idea? What if we cut paper out to the right size, and we wrap it around the cans, and you can draw like faces on well, it? we have enough cans. We've got enough cans, I've got more. So, in order, in order to get the right size for the can, with the tape measure, you can wrap the tape measure around the can to find out roughly what size paper you're going to need. This is coming at about 22 centimetres, you can see that there. First, you need to make sure that the edge of your paper is on the zero centimetres mark. Alright, make a mark, can you make a mark for me please, at 23 centimetres. We want to draw a straight line that goes all the way down the piece of this paper, so that's where we know where to cut it. So in order to do this, we're going to make two marks of 23 centimetres at different points along the length of this paper. So, um, and can you make, 15, 16, make your mark? 20, 9, 9, 20, 20, 20, yeah, 20, make the mark. Uh, that's not a good mark. Can you rub out that mark? Rub it out, because that's a silly mark. 
Now the problem with that mark is it's not accurate. It's very important when you make your mark at a measurement that you make it small and neat. Okay? Uh, Perfect. That's a better mark. Now we're going to use the edge of our ruler to join up the two marks and draw the straight line. Press the end of the pencil against the edge of the ruler and start from the end here because we want our line to go all the way down there, nice and straight. But you need to apply a little... Starting from there. That's it. And you want to draw down the edge of the ruler. Pushing that... Oh, 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 we've Move. gone wrong. Uh-oh. Let's try again. Conundrum. <laughs> okay. Conundrum. Let's try again. Okay. Conundrum. Press the pencil. Press the pencil against the edge of the ruler and draw it down. Keep, make sure that that pencil end is always touching the ruler as you go down. Mm -hmm. Keep going, nearly there, all the way to the end of the paper. Very good. So now we have a straight line that runs from here to here and we know where we're gonna cut our piece of paper. Now, Ted, can you cut down that line? Very good. Keep on the line, keep on the line. Keep on the line, please. Now the last bit is to wrap our newly piece sleeve for our can around, and we can use one of the bits of tape that we made earlier to stick on it like that. Brilliant. This one, this one, this one, this one, this one, you get zero points. So that's pretty cool. So actually what you can do with this game, can not that, is actually you can kind of make your own game out of it, right? We need one last one. Now, arguably the most important thing in Crazy Golf is the ball. And that is what we are going to make now using things that we found around the house. Now the aim of the Crazy Golf game is to hit your ball with the club, starting at the tee and to get it in the hole at the end and along the way overcome some obstacles and challenges. At Plonk, we spend a lot of time and effort trying to think of cool new ideas that could be those challenges and obstacles. Across our different courses we have ramps and loops and hills and all sorts of things. But when it comes to the ball, over the years we've had every different coloured ball that you can imagine. Nowadays we mostly use yellow and orange ones. Sometimes our balls even glow in the dark. Sometimes we even build ultraviolet courses and so our balls glow in the dark. Pretty cool. To make the balls that we're going to make today, you need a little weight to go in the middle of it. We're using a marble in this instance that we've managed to find around the house. We're then going to make our ball bigger using tin foil. We're going to wrap the tin foil around the weight. We'll do this in layers, one layer at a time. And as you wrap each layer around, use your hands to sculpt a sphere out of it. You want to try to push out any dimples or ridges and try to make the perfect sphere. A little bit like rolling a ball out of plasticine or play-doh. Once you've done your first layer, put another layer on. In the end, the ball should be about four centimeters in its diameter. Now, when you're happy with your sphere and you think the board is big enough, you could add another layer of paper over it. In our next episode, we will be painting these and making them look really cool and making them our own. The ramp, sir. Where do you think we should put the ramp? Spot the ramp. So, you hit it with the club. It's supposed to go. Oh, he's done it! How many points did you get there, sir? Mine got really in 45 points. Really? You've added up all the cans, you got that? Yeah. Ah, that's a lot of points. Okay.
Let's try and get the rest up. Oh, you did it. I even got the splat. Die down. In our next episode, we'll be showing you how to make a hole. Materials you will need are a cereal packet, paper, a ruler, pencils, scissors, and paint. Make sure to tag and at us with your pics and videos of your courses to win weekly prompt prizes. See you next week and keep on conking. It's not hard work being me, but it feels like it. People don't realize the energy it takes to spend all of your time not really talking about much of anything. Sometimes it works out absolutely fantastic. If I can really not reach out to people and they get it, then hey, all my lack of work was for something, right? A moment.